Today, we are here to talk about the Los Angeles Kings. Your Locked On Flames, your daily podcast on the Calgary Flames. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to Locked on Flames. As always, I'm your host, Jess Belmosto, and today I have a very special guest joining me, former Locked on Kings host, Sarah Evampato, and uh, we're going to talk all about the Pacific Division rival that might be a dark horse, I feel like. <laughs> But before we dive into that, make sure you're subscribed to Locked on Flames wherever you get your podcasts, uh, free 99 across the board, and of course on YouTube as well. Leave a nice comment, a nice review. It means a lot. But Sarah, how's it going? It's good. It, it is It is nice to be back on familiar locked on grounds, hanging out, yeah. making people care about my opinions. So, you know, love it. I knew that I had to call upon you. <laughs> this is the one. Need to know everything. So I guess we should start with like the biggest. uh, Trevor Lewis resigned. Obviously. (laughs) Obviously, that's the most important thing uh, that the Kings have done all offseason. They brought our hero home. (laughs) And then they traded for some guy named uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois. What what is this? That dude. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, What's the... What's it mean for the Wait. kids right now? Like, yeah, I, I mean, it's it, a good sign. Yeah, it, it's, I'm really curious to see how this goes. Like, the, the Kings obviously gave up a ton in order to get Pierre-Luc Dubois. Um, it's clearly a move that they think is going to help them out. You know, Rob Blake, love him or hate him as the GM, has not, you know, when he makes a splash, he makes a splash. He doesn't make a move just to do, to do something because he's bored. <laughs> Um, and he makes moves in that he believes in. Um, we can disagree with <laughs> whether he's right or not, uh, but the Kings gave up a whole lot to get Pierre-Luc Dubois, but he was, in terms of like players available, he's the guy. Um, yeah. But they gave up enough that you're like, okay, well, this is better work out, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, you know, so they, they lost several players in the trade, um, including Gabe Velarde. He's one that I, I was kind of sad to see go. I uh, really felt like he was just kind of starting to reach his potential. Um, Alex, I follow is a guy with a real underrated skill set. Yeah. There's not like necessarily an obviously re- obvious replacement for him in the lineup right now. Um, and, and so those guys, it's going to hurt to, to miss them. Um, And it also sort of puts into question, I I think the biggest one for Kings fans is, what does this mean for uh, Quentin Byfield? Because he is kind of touted as, you know, we we see this guy as a like top line center of the future. Mm -hmm. Um, His development has been kind of slow. I think everyone needs to continue to be chill with him because, you know, that that is a role that like some guys walk into the league day one, like Connor McDavid, like but you're not 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 everyone's Connor McDavid. There's one no, Connor McDavid. You, you know? have to crawl before right. you can run. Right. Not everyone <laughs> is Connor McDavid right. or yeah. a Kale McCarr. Right. You can't just expect yeah. this to be like a video game right. or like right. those rare superstars. Right. So like I, I think that it is a big question that we'll see how the Kings handle, but you know, inserting Pierre Luc Dubois into the lineup basically means the down the middle is going to be Andre Kopitar, Dubois, Phil Deneau, and then it's been Blake Lazat. Like the fourth line can just be whoever. Um, Quentin Byfield's not a fourth fourth line center. Like we shouldn't be putting him in that role. I don't mm-hmm. think they're going to, which really means that he's going to be a winger, uh, which is fine, um, and they've had success doing that before, you know, not everyone is going to be a center at first. It gives them better flexibility. Uh, So it would be interesting to see how they deploy them, but you know, I'm excited. Um, A little nervous because of all that they gave up, but clearly Rob Blake sees that as a step that they needed to make to kind of solidify things up front. And uh, we're just going to keep crossing our fingers that it works. (laughs) Yeah, the return for him was just insane yeah. going back to Winnipeg. And I was, they must have been so sad. <laughs> they had to take a bus. Right. There's no airport. <laughs> right. You just have to like hope you get there. Yeah. They're probably hoping they don't. 
Right. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess one of the bigger questions that I had about this is, could this be a potential situation, Eric Carlson situation, in a few, well, later on in the contract, I guess, yeah. is if he wants out, if they haven't won anything yet, and things are just kind mm. of not good? Right. Well, if there's one thing to say for Pierre-Luc Dubois and his agent is that like, they are not afraid to be like, Hey, this sucks. We want to go make it happen. You know? So if, if he's dissatisfied for better or worse, we're going to know about it. Um, But, you know, I, I do think that it's a different situation than he was in, in Columbus and in Winnipeg where like they weren't even close to competing. Um, You know, I, I think that if the Kings haven't like, you know, won or come close to winning in the next five, six years towards the end of Dubois' contract, like, there's bigger problems then. And if he wants to leave, like, good luck and Godspeed, my son. Um, yeah. You know, but but yeah, I, I think that he automatically, like, I the the big thing in on him is all of this off-ice drama of, you know, he quits on the team, he just wants out, he wants the perfect, like, well, you know, okay. Um, he wasn't in great situations. He wasn't on teams that were were going anywhere. No offense to Columbus and, and Winnipeg, but you know that that he, yeah. he he doesn't have many rights or options as a player, and so demanding to be how sent somewhere dare he, wants to he how right dare he exercise right. that. And the situations in Winnipeg and Columbus were really about as bad as they could probably get especially for a young player Mm -hmm. you know obviously john tortorella just yeah he's tortorella yeah (laughs) and then winnipeg like you literally had like your coach right right i'm out i hate this (laughs) isn't in it anymore and then goes and makes it right goes yeah (laughs) if we want to talk about quitters (laughs) <laughs> maybe people talking about the wrong person but I just I don't think that this is a situation where it, I, I don't know it just feels like everything is lined up right kind of perfectly not just for the player but for the team as well but yeah we'll never know well I guess we will know we'll yeah. know in a few years we'll find out <laughs> Do you think that they are a better team than they were at the end of last season? That's a big shrug question mark from me. <laughs> um, you know, I, I I think that in some respects they are better. Um, you know, Dubois obviously is going to be a huge impact for them. Um, I think that he will work very well, you know, with Kopitar and with Dino as like a truly terrifying, you know, three lines that you're going to have to match up against. Um, so I, I think that he he's a great addition, um, regardless of what you had to give up to get him. Um, they're going to get a whole year from uh, Gavrikov, who you know came in and fit in basically seamlessly at, at the trade deadline. Um, you know, especially with defensemen, sometimes you're like, okay, well that didn't work. Um, mm-hmm. But he, you know, he he got on very quickly with what they were looking for from him, and I think getting a whole year out of him is going to be beneficial. Um, you know, goaltending is. We'll talk about that later, I think. Um, yeah, we will. But, like, then again, goaltending was also, like, a huge suspect mess last year, too. Mm-hmm. So, like, I would say they're a little bit better than last year. Um, I don't think that they're, like, we're going to win the division the whole, th- like, you know, yeah. that much better. But I think that they're slowly churning towards getting in a better place. They just need goaltenders. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Jacob Markstrom, if if you would like. <laughs> I mean, uh, maybe. I've only got so many reclamation projects uh, in me. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but coming up next, we are going to talk about goaltending, some breakout players, and some green flags heading into the season. But before we do that, we are going to take a quick break, and I'm going to tell you all about our friends at FanDuel. Uh, Get ready for the NFL season with incredible offers from FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. All customers who bet $5 will get $100 off 
NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. That that's a stunning deal. Plausible. Yes, I wow that. <laughs> that I mean that feels like a good uh, good offer there. Now is the best time to join FanDuel. The app is easy to use, and you can be on. Everything from spreads to player props and more. So visit fanduel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season with an offer you don't want to miss. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Thank you everyone for sticking around and hanging out with us today. It feels like an old, well, it's like Western Conference Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. we're it, just rolling it back. Yeah, exactly. What it. Wow, stars align perfectly for that. <laughs> so we talked about, you know, the good, the additions. What what are some other good things about the Kings this season? And why should why should Flames fans be a little uh concerned? Um, so I think other good things are, you know, particularly with taking out Velarde and I follow from the lineup that is two lineup spots that are you know middle six guys that someone is going to have to jump up and seize that spot you know they didn't bring in a whole ton of other foot like you know they didn't also make a bunch of forward moves you know to to mm -hmm. fill those spots so we're gonna see guys like Arthur Kaliev get a better chance to really show what he has I think he was fine on the fourth line but that is not his role that is not <laughs> why we drafted him um right. so I, I think that one thing I'm looking forward to seeing is seeing how these younger players step up um we're kind of at a point where we need them to me be making that next step um the team definitely took the patient approach and saw that pay off with Adrian Kempe who's had like two breakthrough seasons in a row. Um, and so now it's turn, It's time for those young guys to step up again. Um, also exciting to look forward to is what's going to happen on the defense. Um, Cause I think that we're going to have a chance to see Brant Clark uh, make the NHL. They're really, I, I feel like giving him every option to take, you know, take an open slot um, mm -hmm. guys like Jordan Spence are probably going to get more time. If not the, one of my cats just knocked something over. Mine just uh, <laughs> you know, if not, uh, you know, be it, be an NHL regular. So I, I think that if I'm looking forward to anything, it is going to be the, the emergence of those young players who are going to get maybe more of a shot than they would have before because an Alex Iafalo or a Gabe Velarde was, you know, in the way essentially. Well, that see, that's always a bright spot. I feel like you know, obviously turnover, it happens. It's mm -hmm. part of game and you could go out and sign a bunch of old veterans or you can really mm -hmm. look within your own organization and you know use the guys that mm -hmm. you saw fit when you right. drafted them <laughs> instead of just trading them right away. right you mean teams do that <laughs> <laughs> i wouldn't know does Kopitar still have it? Yeah, he does. You know, I, I think that if he's lost anything, it's speed, but he was never the fastest player in the first place. Um, you know, I think this was like the first season in years where he didn't lead the team in points. And I, I might even be wrong in that, that he, he might have actually still led them in points. But like, you know, and it's only because like they've got like a Kevin Kevin Fiala now, like pushing, yeah. to, you know, um, you know, I think his playmaking is still amazing. Um, his defensive awareness. And I think that he's going to be a great resource a for Dubois who is you know has kind of gone through a rocky start to you know I mean he's been around for a while now but like hasn't had the smoothest of starts and I think that letting him learn from you know the reigning Lady Bing winner or whatever um mm. I, I think will be a great opportunity for him for him to to be with Kopitar but yeah no he still has it he still is I I have to assume incredibly hard to play against um yeah he's he's not he's he's no like speed demon but he never was so yeah, yeah. i mean and you know some players truly age like fine wine mm -hmm. i was just talking about this on lockdown kings yesterday but it's mm -hmm. not airing till next week <laughs> uh just about how similar him and patrice bergeron mm -hmm. are and, you know just kind of going with grace yeah and you know, still being able to provide something to your yeah. team yeah. when you're, you know, supposed to be going on to greener pastures. Right. 
hockey. Like 35, forget it. Right. And you're ancient. Yeah. Like Leonardo DiCaprio when his girlfriend was 25, 26. Who, who's going to be a breakout player this year? So I'm looking for Arthur Kaliev to do it. I, I would I would say I'm kind of toss up between him and Byfield. I think they're both guys who you can see the flashes of them starting to put it all together. I think that, you know, them putting Byfield at the wing role, I, I think will help him a lot because he won't have to worry about all the defensive responsibilities of being a center. He doesn't have to worry about winning a face off unless he has to. Um, so I'm really looking forward to seeing them. Um, you know, there'll be more power play time opportunities available because of some of the player changes. So I, I'm really looking for those two guys to, uh, to, to have the seasons that Kings fans have been waiting for from them since they were drafted. Yeah. And I think, like you said, you know, you gotta be patient with mm-hmm. these sort of things and you can't just launch these players yeah. into the league because right. uh, what, is such like a stark reminder is that players that are getting drafted now like grew up watching Johnny Gaudreau. That's and, terrifying. And like he's not, he's like 29, like 28, 29 right. years old. That's not. Right. Like, That's, I would need to go. guys like close to double their age sometimes. And it's like. That's ridiculous. I didn't even think about that. I hate it. <laughs> oh, it makes me sick. Because I'm like. No, what do you yeah. mean? Yeah, <laughs> well, I mean, it's like, yeah, it's like the, the the kings you hear, like you know, Brant Clark being like, "I grew up idolizing Drew Doughty, and he's right there." Like, <laughs> right, like he is still very much in the locker right. room, right? He's, like, that's crazy. Oh <laughs> but goaltending, do we have to? I, I, <laughs> speaking of guys that were or have been in the league for a long time, Jonathan <laughs> Quick just. Flicked to Vegas at the trade deadline. What what were your thoughts about that? It you know it was one of those ones where the business side of me like appre- not appreciated, but like it was a little bit ruthless. Rob Blake was just like, "See ya," um, <laughs> you know, and, and you know he he got done with what he had to get done. He did what he needed to do to make the team better, and like I get that, and I understand that, and like that's kind of how you need to run a business. But like at the same time, it kind of sucked um, to see him just sort of like unceremoniously get dumped, but also at the same time, what are you going to do? Like you're, you're chasing a playoff spot. Mm -hmm. Your entire goaltending situation is broken. You you're not going to be able to carry three of them. Um, Mm -hmm. Someone has to go. And he was, you know, the the easiest one to move out um, because no one was going to take Cal Peterson at that point. No. Didn't they place him on waivers? Yeah, they they put Peterson on waivers and sent him to the AHL um, with the hope of him, like, rediscovering his game in a lower pressure situation. And that didn't really work. And now he's a flyer. So, you know, whatever. Where all the players go to die. Right, yeah, sorry, Cal. <laughs> you seem like a nice young man. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I hate to break a team with it. Good luck. I, I just, I don't know what's going on. Yeah. I, not even just with the Kings. But just I feel in general. Like just in general, so many teams recently have been, that is a kitten. It is. Oh my goodness. If you're not w- watching on YouTube, you should be watching because there is a little baby kitten on the screen. And now they're gone. Yeah. <laughs> but, but the goalie carousel yeah. is I feel like that usually happens during free agency. Mm-hmm. But we're seeing a lot of trades. Yeah. I feel like. I don't know. Maybe yeah. I'm just it was a weird year for goalies. Um, and like, I don't, I don't know how much faith I have in, in the situation going forward into this year. Like Phoenix Copley was like, if you look at his numbers, his numbers were fine. Like they weren't anything amazing. He's not going to be in the top of anything in the league, but he got done what needed to get done. Is he going to have the same year next year? Or is he going to like regress to the same player who had basically been a journeyman stuck in the AHL for his whole career because he couldn't like he just didn't fit in the mm-hmm. NHL? Like we don't know what yeah. Phoenix Copley we're gonna get. I have no idea what Cam Talbot has left. I literally forgot that the Kings got him in free agency until I saw a tweet like the other day and was like, "What?" Yeah. <laughs> so like it feels very goaltending by committee. Mm-hmm. Um, and they also got uh, David Riddich, who will be in the AHL um, 
hopefully <laughs> unless we have another repeat of last season um but yeah it's i don't know this could go very poorly like there's more scoring on the kings particularly with adding dubois but like i don't know that they're gonna outscore all their problems if the goaltending just like implodes <laughs> You know, that very well could be the case. I think Flames fans know that a little (laughs) too well. And coming up next, we're going to wrap up the show with some predictions and just, you know, are are the Kings going to be able to make it out of the first round if they make the playoffs? And thank you, everyone, for hanging out with us today on Locked on Flames. It is an unofficial uh, (laughs) crossover because... You're still the host of Lockdown Kings in my heart. Yeah, you know, just hanging. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so Trevor Lewis went home. He did. I, good for him. Deserved. <laughs> I mean, loved him on the Flames. Very nice to look at. Um, did what he needed to do. Yeah. He was kind of just anchored down on the yeah. fourth line. And yeah, he's a, he's a guy. He's a guy. Like from the nostalgia perspective, I love it. Like now, mm-hmm. I think that he. You know, part of the problem the Kings had is that, like, they didn't really have that Trevor Lewis of guy that I can sit for a couple of games and, like, not really feel bad about, you know? And so instead, they're cycling through their younger players and, like, you know, does it really benefit uh, Jared Anderson Dolan for being the, you know, 13th forward for half of the season when he really should be getting playing time to, like, see what he has? So, like, I I, I don't hate it because I, it feels like that is the role that Trevor Lewis is going to play. Like, jumps into the lineup when you need him he you know that he is someone that um Todd McClellan can trust in basically any situation you put him in but at the end of the day if you need to healthy scratch him for 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 a reason to get a younger guy playing time like I think that Trevor Lewis probably understands that like that's where he's at and you know I'm presuming this is probably his last hurrah you know so letting him go home essentially uh to to finish out his career like I can't I can't complain about that. And then uh, the former goaltending tandem <laughs> of Calgary yeah. and Cam Talbot and David Riddick. Um, that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, Cam Talbot, I have a little bit more faith in. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, he's fine. Yeah. I, good old David. Enjoy. Where where's your AHL team? Ontario. Ontario. Just down the road. <laughs> yeah. So you know, just yeah. enjoy it. Um, yeah. You still get the sunshine. Still, yeah. it's beautiful. They all beach. they all live in LA anyway. Yeah. So, so you know, it's fine. <laughs> and yeah, I don't know. Like seeing them signed, I was like, what is going on? That like poor Kings fans. Yeah. But yeah. where where do the Kings finish if goaltending is a stable Mm -hmm. uh, average a a little (laughs) bit above league average um that all everyone stays healthy on the Mm -hmm. offensive and defensive front what what do we do you know like i i feel like they're probably in the same approximate position they were last year because you know when we look at the bottom of the the standings anaheim i maybe marginally better than than they were before, but I I don't see them taking a huge leap. San Jose, Vancouver, like San Jose is going to be horrible. They know it. Um, Sorry, sharks. Um, I I think the Vancouver is still going to be bad. Um, And then, you know, the the rest of it, like I I just presume that they are, I might as well just slot them into that like number three spot in, in the division. Like, I think that that's fair. <laughs> that's where I have them. I think yeah. it's, you know, Vegas and Edmonton. Mm-hmm. Whoever. I mean, yeah. I don't know what Vegas is going to look like. If they're still showing up to mm-hmm. get drunk, which I mean, I wouldn't blame them. Yeah, you know. <laughs> but whatever. And then, you know, those. So obviously then LA. Mm-hmm. Uh, Seattle. Maybe. And then Calgary. Interchange. Yeah. Like, yeah. I just, I feel like that's just kind of – the Pacific Division has absolutely gotten better since I first started covering right. it four years ago, three or four years ago. So, yeah, that's just – it's great to actually talk about. Yeah. 
multiple teams. Yeah. Also, Maybe. it's like they've gotten better, but it's like everyone has gotten better at the same rate. Yeah. So the bad teams are still bad, even though like the Ducks, well, I feel like their Ducks are a bad example because they had like a really horrible se- season, but like they have more interesting pieces now than they did four mm-hmm. years ago. Um, but yeah, everyone sure. else in the division has gotten better. And so mm-hmm. they, they have a long road to climb to even like get into that wild card conversation absolutely the dreaded question about the first round <laughs> I was thinking about this I was like they they can't be the new Toronto I hope not they can't that'd be so depressing and especially you know like it was always Boston and Toronto in mm-hmm. the first round are we seeing a pattern here with Oilers and Kings I mean it feels like it and I hate it. Um, <laughs> I like, I, I really hope that they don't like, I don't want them to play the Oilers again. A, cause I'm bored of that. Yeah. Uh, B, because I, I just don't, I'm like, if, if you haven't figured it out yet, Todd McClellan, like, I don't know that the third tri- time is going to be the charm. Um, it, it just seems like there is no answer for what they have. And Todd McClellan, bless his heart. Like, doesn't change the game plan that much um and so when things are going south like it doesn't really like they just that sort of descending right they just sort of keep going going over. yeah so like i hope they don't meet up with the oilers again because it just feels like bad vibes all around but also like I don't, I don't, I don't want to play any of these teams. No. <laughs> I just want to lift the trophy or right. what? I don't, I don't want to lift the trophy. It's heavy, but so like, I want to yeah. watch. Yeah. Well, it's just, <laughs> my it's hard work. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have any bold predictions for either Calgary or the Kings mm. before we wrap up today's episode? Hmm. I, hmm. I'm, I'll give you one for the flames. I think the flames make it back to the playoffs. I love to hear that. I appreciate the optimism I, coming I know, from outside I know of the house. On. I know what show I'm yeah. on, but yeah, you know, I know I think that they have they have they made a good cho- a good choice for coach. I think that a lot of the dysfunction that was, you know, driving some of the bad results last year is gone now. Um, so I, I I don't know. I think it'll be I think it'll be fun. I think they do it. I just hope not at the king's expense. <laughs> yeah. No. I um, appreciate the Kings. They put on a real <laughs> clinic when I went to see them. Yeah. Uh, two. Thank you guys. I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, no, I'm traumatized. I can only imagine <laughs> how the players feel. <laughs> but uh, thank you, Sarah, yeah. so much for joining us today. Of course. Uh, great to see you again. Yeah. Are you plug all of your. Yeah work what you what you doing now yeah so you can find me on twitter at right said sarah if you're watching youtube it's down there um it's w r w r i t e said sarah with an h uh we are re- relaunching jewels from the crown which is the former sb nation uh los angeles king site uh so you can find that online at jewels from the uh we are easing back into uh to publishing now that we're getting ready for the season to start uh, so you can keep up with King's news on there. Um, also, if you are an AHL fiend, you can find me on the Calder Farmstead, which is an AHL only uh, focused podcast uh, available wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, I'm one of the co-hosts and we talk literally entirely about the AHL. So if you're really invested okay. in uh, um, in that, we are your go-to shop for AHL news. Well, thank you so much, Sarah. I appreciate you taking the time out of your evening uh, to talk hockey with me. Yeah. And tomorrow I will be back with another fun episode. Maybe we'll have some news to talk about because, I mean, Elias Lindholm has to be traded at some point or oh Noah Hannafin's got to go somewhere, right? <laughs> Until then, stay safe, stay hydrated, and be nice. <laughs>